Hi, YouTube fans. This is Matt of Post April 6th YouTube channel. What I think I'd like to talk about this evening is uh, I have several uh, ideas for writing stories that all of them, um, out of like over a dozen, are stories, ideas that I've written part of it, but the stories are unfinished. I know that's uh, kind of um, a backwards thing for some people to do, but you know, I got so many ideas for different story ideas, I can't make up my mind on which one to, to stick with. So, but even despite that uh, issue, um, what I think would be a good idea for me to do is I printed out some story ideas that I would like to read. Um, even though the story I'm about to read, it does not have anything to do with um, exactly how old the guy is, but um, all I remember of concerning writing this story is this story takes place roughly somewhere around 2014 or 2016. And it's a guy who uh, lives on uh, a special disability benefits that doesn't cover Social Security. I mean, such a thing doesn't exist, but for fictional purposes, concerning what funds, how he gets the financial benefits he gets, it would be from a private foundation that would provide um, benefits that would be over, probably over $3,000 a month. Because if you want to live in um, San Francisco, uh, one, you better find a really good uh, apartment for under $1,500 a month and um, you better get approved for the apartment, because if you can't, uh, you but you're you're on the waiting list for low-income housing, and uh, you better you better hope that you get approved right away, and you have some somebody to stay with until you get approved. And if you got none of those going for you, uh, you better go somewhere outside of San Francisco, the city and county of San Francisco itself, and find something that would be. If you like San Francisco that much, well, there would be no more than about 25 to 30 miles an hour, or excuse me, 25 to 30 miles away from San Francisco itself, somewhere in the Northern California area, East Bay area of uh, California. So um, the last name of the guy was, is Zebeck, and it's spelled X-E-B-E-C-K. Um, just a minute. Okay. I looked in a special file folder to where I've stored some uh, writing ideas where I hand wrote these items. I didn't type it up and, and print it or type it up on a typewriter and uh, use that as a uh, more solid, uh, permanent uh, document that would be a little more certifiable than a handwritten document. Um, okay, so what the full name of the person is, is Russell Wilson Zebeck. And again, that's Z-E-B-E-C-K. He is somewhere between the age of 31 to 34. The time frame of the story is somewhere between April 4th 2011 to September uh, 24th, 2014. Uh, the father um, is um, Wallace Eugene Zebeck III, and he was born, either, either the father was born or the, um, or perhaps uh, Russell was born in Joplin, Missouri. It says previous addresses. I, I'm not going to say any exact um, street names of these places, but uh, I'll, I'll mention the towns. Previous two living in San Francisco were Colorado Springs, Colorado, Boise, Idaho, and Portland, Oregon. 
and it says quirks about Russell likes to make phone calls from a rotary candlestick retro phone that would be uh, the type of uh, phone I think that would be made by Crosby uh, electronics he wears black eyeglasses roundish glasses with with the types of um, frames it'd be different from what I'm wearing it would be more like this instead of you know this 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 funny or this uh, semi you know a combination between a rectangle and a square type shape like what I'm wearing right now um, he does not like coffee he loves hot tea and iced tea he prefers to use a man manual non-electric typewriter Olivetti because Olivetti I I don't know this for sure but at least as of um, about eight uh, seven to ten years ago they were still making manual non-electric typewriters and it says he gets um, disability benefits from a generous foundation uh, what the name of that foundation would be if such a um, such a foundation exists I don't know I don't know who it would be uh, he surfs the internet with an advanced Mac laptop and he gets his ISP service that is high speed, probably a Wi Fi connection. Because, see, I know from personal experience when me going out uh, vacationing in uh, California, uh, there are some, there are a lot of uh, free of charge public domain uh, Wi Fi signals. Called so One was called SoCal because I stayed with a guy who uh, lived in. Um, San Diego, uh, yes, San Diego, California. Um, he probably gets EBT snap food from California, which, I mean, in reality, if he's getting that much money, he's probably not eligible, but, uh, okay, scratch that one. He, he wouldn't be there. He likes to eat chili cheese dogs, pot stickers, Salmon, tempera shrimp, grilled chicken breast with hollandaise sauce. And for breakfast, he likes to eat oatmeal, or excuse me, oatmeal, just regular oatmeal, non-flavored. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, sausage links and drink orange juice. And for a pet, he has a tuxedo cat with a bright red nose and is a female named Garfield with cute blue eyes. She's a blue-eyed cat. Um, race of the character, he is likely of Armenian descent or ancestry. Uh, type of prescription drugs, um, I better not say that on YouTube. All I can say is one is a hypertension medication and the other one is a preventive seizure medication. Um, languages he can speak is English, Spanish, and he has partial knowledge on how to speak um, Russian. Cars the character would owns uh, a, Kawasaki, a Kawasaki scooter, you know, one of those small size ones. It would almost, it would be just a, just slightly larger than a, what would be called an e-bike or electric bike, and a smart for two, one of those mini cars that uh, are a little bit bigger than a golf cart, and there's only enough room for two people, and it's going to be a tight fit. Two people that are tall and quite overweight, 
Um, they could they they would really have to watch how they how they have their you know their own body movements with their hands and their arms because they could bump in, into each other quite easily. Okay, stereo equipment, a Stanion turntable because I've seen those. I've never owned one, but I've seen those in good electronic stores. And boy, oh boy, you got the you got a really top top dollar um, um, I think it was called magnetic moving magnetic instead of moving co magnetic coil. Um, you know, an MM uh, style cartridge. It's gonna have very very good sound. I mean, if it's not as good as a CD player, it's it's at least 90% as good. Even though you're going to hear a little bit of that snap, crackle, pop from an old uh, uh, vinyl disc. Macintosh preamp and power amp. Techniques AM, FM tuner. Klipsch large speakers. Uh, audiophile CD player. And a 10 inch TAC reel to reel tape player because those 10 inch ones, the ones that have been made in the last 20 years, they're pretty expensive used. I bet the cheapest one is probably 600 bucks and up. I mean, I haven't researched this, it's just my personal, um, my personal instincts tell me that it's 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 a minimum of six hundred dollars, a minimum, unless it's like broken down and there's got a burnout motor, and even then you can get at least a couple hundred bucks for it. And then it says why Russ was or Russell was put on disability benefits. It was due to the fact that he was a overnight stock clerk at a small grocery store. And all of a sudden, he starts. He had several. He had at least six um, serious anxiety attacks while he was at work. And then he. Um, and then and then he he. I guess he, you know, if I were to fully write this story, I would I would talk about a a medical exam that he got and and then how. Um, he, he talked with uh, social services, and social services knew about the, this foundation that would help. Or he did a Google search about finding out about it, and he, he just happened to find out after, after really doing a lot of searching and, and his, own do, do, his own due diligence to find it. Uh, he's got a girlfriend who's quite attractive, six foot, six foot one, um, quite bosomy, 48 double D <laughs> type bra that she would wear. And she looks a lot like uh, actress Janet Lee would have looked when a when Janet Lee was in her twenties and in her thirties. You know, Janet Lee was a very attractive lady, very attractive. Okay, so here's what I'll do now. Now that I've 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 written a, a basic uh, uh, plan of action or outline, I'm going to write. Uh, the story that I typed, and, and I and I just printed it out. It's in a word file. And how this starts is he's 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 asleep, and he's dreaming. The first um, two and a half paragraphs of what I'm about to read. Okay, so here we go. It was moist outside the bungalow home located near Whipple Street in Los Angeles, said the female narrator, narrator, whom spoke with a beautiful Eastern accent. Regarding the story she was narrating, then he hears the distinct static effect of a tuning dial of an old AM radio. Then he hears the clipped voice of another Easterner, a well-spoken man whom was well-educated at Princeton or Harvard University. Let me say that one again, excuse me. 
a man who was a well-educated at Princeton or Harvard University graduate speaking these words I confess I must confess indeed confess that I have no truthful answer as to how we as Americans will be able to overcome this dank economic recession we are all victims of. Then he hears the AM radio producing the static effect sound yet again. And the channel changes. And he hears the sound of eggshells being cracked and bacon cooking on a hot stove within an old school cafe restaurant. And then he hears a woman say, Mmm, the two eggs over easy. Four strips of bacon. And biscuits and gravy make the best breakfast anyone can have. At Pacific West Coast Cafe is the best in the world. And then he hears the AM radio effect from the radio dial again. Russ hears the sound of Chicago Transit Band playing Does Anybody Really Know What Time It Is? Circa 1969. One of the songs from their album and he likes what he is hearing. He's liked that song since he heard it for the first time in 1984 when he was only four to five year old little boy. His most favorite line is, as I was walking down the street one day, dun, dun, dun. A man came up to me and asked what time was on my watch. Yeah. Then he heard the highly scary, scary sound of a loud thunderbolt coming from outside his plush apartment. building and then he hears an even louder thunderbolt strike now he is wide awake and not dreaming anymore and he sees a heavy monsoon rain flow then he sees a bright flash of light and the loudest thunderbolt lightning that sounded like a building explosion and his eyes open wide and he begins to start shaking and he speaketh to the Lord in a voice of pure anguish. Lord, please protect all of us. I don't want to get struck by lightning. Then he carefully reaches for the lamp post on the nightstand. The lamp turns on the thunder stops and he sees his cat Garfield hiding inside the walk-in closet and as it rains she meows in a manner that is loud, loud crying like this. And then gasps and chirps. He said in a kind tone of voice. His black 
and white tuxedo cat with cute blue eyes. And then he says unto her, Garfield, it's going to be all right. You won't get hurt by the rainstorm. I will see to it. I promise you. Then he looks at the alarm clock. And it is now 4.30 a.m. And the heavy rainstorm makes the outdoor look pitch black. Combined with the sight coming from a heavy, drenching, monsoon rain storm. That's all I wrote. Well, um, what I would write after that is what he would probably do is he would, because um, he, he only has underwear on. Oh, excuse me. Gosh. Shaking of the camera. Okay. And um, he puts on a bathrobe. He goes into his kitchen. He takes out of the refrigerator some uh, canned tuna from a little treat of uh, a little treat of canned tuna that he uh, gave her some before. In um, you know, he, either he gave it to to her raw in in the cat food dish, or he put it on a little itty bitty like uh, teacup plate, you know, one of those small ones, or he just combined it with the dry cat food to get her to eat the cat food because she hadn't eaten in several hours and he was concerned and he wanted her to eat something so that the cat would get nourishment. And then what he did was he probably reads the Holy Bible and then the rain storm stops after about a little over a half hour and um, he starts yawning and he goes back to sleep. And he sleeps. Um, let's see, this is about 4.30 when he wakes up. He stays up for at least another half hour, so he's, he falls asleep uh, roughly somewhere between 10 after 5 and uh, 5.18 approximately is the best guess I can make. And he keeps sleeping and sleeping for another... Um, another, excuse me a minute, for a little more than nine hours, and he uh, wakes up, he wakes up somewhere between about 9.30 and 9.45 a.m., the exact time to the minute, who knows, <laughs> and um, he can see by the way the cat is looking at him. I go, meow, meow, meow. And she's got that look in her eyes, like, feed me, feed me, feed me. And my cat Isabella does that to me Jesus, sometimes. He goes over to the area, probably somewhere near the kitchen, I would assume, or a uh, one of those walk-in walk -in pantries. And he gets her some cat food, and he puts it in her cat food dish, and he fills up some water. And then he, um, you know, does everything that most men have to do after they've been sleeping for so long. Goes to the bathroom, takes a shower, shaves, brushes his teeth, and takes, um, you know, those two different uh, medications that he must take every day. And he goes into the kitchen and he makes himself uh, some oatmeal and about three... Um, breakfast sausages. They may be the type of breakfast sausages where they would be a vegetarian oriented one and there's no meat inside there. Uh, something you would get at a, at a good health food store. And then um, he, he goes uh, right out front to um, his apartment and the apartment, based on the mental picturization I have in my mind, um, you know, if, if this 
if I would write this book and yeah, if I would write this book, make it a novel and and um, turn it into a uh, movie, um, it would be somewhere that would be. I would assume um, a half a mile away from the Golden Gate Bridge, and it would be on the end where instead of seeing, you, you would see the beginning of it where it's going this way over into, I think, what would be called uh, Mill Valley. Instead of being on the other side of the bridge and you're in uh, Mill Valley looking this way into San Francisco. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> He, he reads the either the San Francisco Chronicle or some other local um, newspaper that's of his strikes his fancy that he would like. And then um, he gets out a book that he wants to read. What type of book that would be? Um, well, to be honest, I don't know the character that well. But it, but it wouldn't be one of the controversial books, like To Kill a Mockingbird, Catcher in the Rye, because Catcher in the Rye was the book that, um, like this, uh, leaning up against the, the building uh, where uh, the assassin, Mark David Chapman, was leaning up against when the police grabbed him and apprehended him and placed him under arrest and took him away. Because Mark David Chapman... Oh, goodness, I did it again. Mark David Chapman admitted to, 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 to murdering John Lennon. I mean, that, that, that's how crazy that guy was. He, he shoots John Lennon in the chest five times, and then he leans up against the wall reading the book and acting all casual? Whoo! He, he, he should have ran away from the scene and hid somewhere. Most serial killers do that. Oh, goodness. Okay. Or, um, Psychedelic Experience, which I think John Lennon liked that because when he was really heavily into acid right before uh, Sgt. Pepper uh, Beatles album was, 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 was made. Or, um, books written by, um, I forget the guy's first name, but it was Higgins, something Higgins, or uh, Louis Lamar, or something that was be written by, um, I think the author's name is Mike Connolly or Connell or something like that. You, you know, he's one of those types of guys who writes those police drama movies, or excuse me, police drama books, or a book that would be written by. Um, Rex, excuse me a minute. I had to think about this for a second. Uh, Rex Burns, or by Lawrence Block, B L O C K. Um, I would assume that it might be one of those um, kind of romance stories, and it would, and, and, and the romance story would take place. Um, somewhere in Berkeley, somewhere between the 70, 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. Because I bet you there's been at least a couple of novels that were romance-related or romance-drama novels that were written by somebody who lived in Berkeley for quite some time or, knew, or somebody who knew a lot about Berkeley after doing extensive research who, who, who was an author. Who that was and what the title of the books though, would, would, or what the title of the books would be I don't know. I bet if I searched really hard, I could find it. But, you know, I, I don't have the time to search for it. And then I think what he would do is he would go to a fitness facility and do some exercising. And then he would go to, um, I think it might be a park called Nopa. 
it's northern something pan handle area yeah there's there's one of the one of the neighborhoods is called in in San Francisco is called Nopa there's a soma that's south market area and uh Nopa is northern panhandle at least I'm pretty sure that's what Nopa city stands for <clears throat> And the other thing he would probably do is he would go to a bookstore and start uh, just looking around at random, just, you know, just look around at all the different areas, of all the different genres of books. And when, when he saw something that was either A, by the author, or B, just something about the cover intrigued him, and he started reading through it. And he liked the book, and he bought it. Um, and then he would, then he would come home, and I think what he might do is, A, get on his Kawasaki scooter and just do some driving around, or B, he would get in his smart for two itty bitty teeny weeny little me uh, 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 vehicle. Yeah. Um, now, before I forget... Here is something, I, a story idea I drafted way, way, way back a long time ago. This was back in 2006. Just a minute. I need to go verify something so I can get an exact feel for when, it, when, it, when I uh, drafted this thing. Okay, I, 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 I looked at the properties on the, on the Word file, and it was uh, drafted in uh, 2006, May 25th, 2006. Okay, so this was a story that took place in January of uh, 1996, and the character is named Victor Preston. So here's, and, and the title of the story is 13th Street Chill. Okay. It Hi, this is Matt again. The something popped up in my smartphone and I had to do this over again. Oh boy. Okay. Now back to the story. Thirteenth Street Chill. Again, it was written uh, May 25th, 2006. I, I looked this up on the properties on, on the word file itself. It was a bitter cold night in mid-January 1996. Victor Preston was walking down East 13th Avenue in Denver, Colorado. Victor was wearing an old cable knit sweater underneath his black shiny leather jacket and frayed blue jeans as he walked the remaining two blocks home occasionally sipping on his cappuccino he had purchased at a small independent coffee shop three days before it snowed to almost blizzard-like conditions causing him to be late for his job at, as a dock worker at G.F. Bond's department stores. He was still amazed at the mountainous banks of snow piled up along the side of the road, spilling over into sidewalks. He was learning a lesson on being such a slave to fashion and that is that you don't wear a leather jacket in below zero weather even if you have a heavy sweater on as he kept walking and shivering in fact his shoulders and his whole body was sore from working hard and shivering um 
the 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 other alternate title that I had for this story was Phone Fear. Yes. And what hap what would happen is is he um, he gets home. He gets out of his um, clothing and he takes a shower and gets and, and uses the massage uh, setting on one of those three-way I think would be called Teledyne water watermark or water pick uh, shower heads or, or something that would be that was designed that would be that type of uh, have that same type of technology and he's you know massaging his shoulders and he's massaging his back like this and uh, then he, um, he he gets a phone call, and this guy calls, and he hears this guy going, and Victor says, "Who is this? Who is this?" Who is this? And the guy finally responds after going like a maniac. He says, You don't know? And he says, No. Who is this? Who is this? Come on, man, what's going on here? He says, Well, you're supposed to know. And he said, oh, really? If I'm supposed to know, then what's my name? I know what your name is. I said, and then, and then Victor says, well, go on, say it, if you know. And the guy hangs up the phone. That's pretty sick. It is. Because when a guy calls to make that type of prank call, and he doesn't even bother to say the, the name of who he is, or, 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 or um, excuse me, when 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 the when the perpetrator, the person making the the, the prank call, can't actually say the name of the, of who he's talking to, who's on the receiving end. Uh, that's pretty sick. The reason why I hung up on him is because Victor called his bluff. Yeah. Victor called his bluff. And then what he does is he goes into his kitchen. He uh, takes out a, um, I think... I, I can't remember the name, but it was it was it was in a red it was in a yellowish thing with like green um, graphics around the the display of the Mexican entree. It was it was a beef enchilada with cheese and uh, a thing of a side thing of refried beans and 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 Spanish rice or Mexican rice. I remember eating those, and boy, those were good until I had the last one. The last one, ugh. I mean, it had a bland taste to the to the to the rice, and the and and the refried beans were dry and funny tasting. And after that, I was just like, no, not gonna buy that no more. Nope, not gonna do it. And then he's eaten away, and he's about two thirds of the way done, and the phone rings again. Yep. Yeah. And this time he was smart. He looked at his caller ID unit to see if he could find out who it was. All it was was it just said anonymous. And then he thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let the phone ring and I'm going to let it go to my uh, AT&T voicemail system, digital voicemail system. And the guy uh, let it ring and ring. And then on about the fifth or the sixth ring, 
the answering machine greeting begins. And then the guy just goes, he just hears this. And the guy hangs up the phone. Same guy. No doubt about it, it was the same guy. And then he calls back again, and he gets this anonymous, and he picks up on the second one and says, Hello? Hello? And he can tell. Even though the guy is, is, is kind. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the wrong number. Click. He hangs up again. Oh, God. He turns on the TV. He's got um, the most uh, inexpensive cable that, that would either be basic cable or it would be um, basic without uh, the pay channels like Cinemax, Showtime, HBO, and um, the other one. Or like Playboy. And he just surfs, he just goes like this, surfs through the, the, the remote until he finds something he likes. He finds an old uh, 1950s movie that he hadn't seen in probably over 10 years. A couple hours go by since the, since the uh, third phone call. And the phone rings again. And he picks up, he, he lets it go to voicemail. And immediately, the guy hangs up. And then, um, the guy uh, goes into an um, inexpensive human order that he has. And after the... Um, either the fourth or the fifth call. And he's smoking away at the cigar, and he stays up until about uh, 11.30. And he, he has to get to work the next day. So he just, you know, he, he as, as he's getting into, getting undressed and, and, and getting into a bathrobe, he's just like, okay, mental note. I'm going to wear that uh, 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 sheep, sheep line, or, or, you know, that, that heavy cotton line, uh, jean jacket. I'm not going to wear that um, leather jacket to work it anymore. No. And he he sleeps and then at 3 a.m. in the morning the phone rings again. And he can hear a man and a woman. You know, they're like face they're like face to face like this. Or like this. And he's just, he can, just, he can just hear him say, hello, 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 hello. And then he hangs up on him, and he takes the phone off the hook, and he says, okay, no more freaking phone calls. No more. He goes to, he, he gets up when the alarm clock wakes him up at uh, a little after 5 a.m., about 5.10, 5.15, something like that. And he, um, he showers, shaves, and he pops in a, um, a fairly bulky, uh, breakfast burrito that was just, that's just potatoes, hell, um, chilies and, uh, a little bit of cheese on there. And... <coughs> He makes a cup of coffee in his coffee maker, and he um, leaves the house promptly at about 5:55 a.m. It's not as cold as it was yesterday, but it's it's about um, it's about 15 degrees above zero instead of um, somewhere between two degrees above zero and five degrees below zero. Like yet, like the day before. 
he, he goes and waits for the um, Route 10 bus that's going eastbound, and he keeps taking it until he gets to uh, approximately um, Mon Monaco. And then um, he gets off on 10th and Monaco, and he takes a bus that would go south to roughly uh, Mississippi and uh, Monaco, South Monaco. And he gets off, and he, he goes into the department store area. He knocks on the back door like he's supposed to because it doesn't open until like about 9.30 or 10. He gets let in. He gets advised about the the stocking project that he has to get has to get uh, involved in. It's not a stocking project per se where he he, he he takes it off the trailer and then he loads it up onto onto the you know the the, the, the flatbed dolly or, or the flatbed uh, cart you know heavy duty cart and takes it from A to B. He just keeps taking boxes after boxes after boxes after boxes after boxes and, and when he gets all that over to a certain area he goes uh, around the store and he, he starts looking at all the registers and he starts writing down a special inventory sheet um, for a certain register number, register number 14 or 304 pens receipt tape trash bags and then he goes to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and he does this uh, for at least an hour and then what he does is he, he 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 starts going around with a special cart and he starts restocking the whole store and then when and then when that is done uh, probably what he does is he um, has a lunch break then when he comes back he uh, goes around the store and he starts collecting boxes after boxes after boxes after boxes and he takes them to the to the trash compactor and then what he probably does is he gets that special, that really wide, flat thing. It looks sort of like a mop, but it's but it's a, but it's a broom. And he does a floor sweep all over the place, the whole store. And then when he's done with that, he has some other things to do. So, well. Whatever else would happen after that day, he'd probably get more phone calls. But, um, anyways, I'll uh, have to end the vlog. But uh, thank you for everybody who has been has joined my YouTube channel, and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed subscribed before, and please give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or you know leave any comments you'd like. Go right ahead. Thank you, everybody, and goodbye.